Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. I'm now going to be answering question number nine from the IGCSE Cambridge paper four variant one from May, June 2020. And this question is about areas and volumes and so on. Mensuration. Now it says here, the diagram shows a sector of a circle with center O and radius 8 centimeters and sector angle 165 degrees. Calculate the total perimeter of the sector. So the sector of a circle is like a slice of a pizza of the circle. It's a pretty big slice here, but the slice of a pizza of a circle, or you could say slice of a cake or whatever, that type of shape. So it's not the whole circle, but it's a portion of the whole circle. Now, what we have to do here is find the total perimeter of the sector. The perimeter is the length of the outline of the shape. So it includes these two straight lines, which are both the radius, so they're both the same length. Okay, and it also includes the length of this arc going from A to B, which I'll call L, length of the arc A to B. So the perimeter of a sector is going to be given by the length of the arc plus two times the radius. 2 times the radius plus the length of the arc will give the perimeter of the sector of a circle. So we already have the radius. Um, and to find the length of the arc, we've got to think about that this, you know, this portion, this arc, is a portion or a fraction of the whole circumference. And the circumference of a circle is given by the formula 2 times pi times r, or pi d. All right, 2 times pi times r is the circumference of the whole circle. Well, we're not interested in the circumference of the whole circle but a fraction of that circle. So the length of the arc is going to be given by the fraction that the angle that the arc is subtended by, you know, the angle that makes the arc, which is, let's call it theta for now, over the total, you know, the angle for the whole circle, of course, which would be 360 degrees, one whole revolution. Okay, that fraction of the whole circumference is what we need. All right, so we have all the information here to find the perimeter. We have the radius, so we have 2 times 8 plus, and then we have all the information we have, 165 over 360 times 2 times pi times 8. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to express this first in terms of pi. So I'm going to have, this is going to be 16, Okay, I'll leave that separately. I'll do, this is going to be 16 plus, and then I'm going to put 165 out of 360. 360. Okay. Times 2 times pi times r, which is 8. That gives us 22 pi over 3. So 16 plus 22 pi over 3. That's the perimeter in its exact form, and now I'm going to round it. So I'll say add 16 to that, and then that's the answer, okay, in terms of 3SF. So it's 39.038. That's 39.038, which I round to three, to, to three significant figures unless otherwise stated. And I think it doesn't say anything anywhere, no. So that's how we express the answer to three significant figures. So that's the answer to part A. And now we're going to go on to part B. It says the surface area of the sphere is the same as the area of the sector of the circle. Okay, so the surface area of a sphere, so there's a sphere now we have, is the same as the area of the sector. Calculate the radius of the sphere. Okay, so... They've told us that the surface area of a sphere is given by this formula 4 pi r squared. Now this r is the radius of the sphere and it's not the same as the r over here. This is a different r. So first of all, we need to find the area of the sector. The area of the sector is a very similar principle to finding the uh, perimeter. In, you have a fraction or a portion of the whole area. Okay, so the area of the sector is going to be 165 over 360 times pi times r squared, because the area of a circle, the area of a circle is pi r squared. All right, so that's the whole area. We want a fraction of the circle, so the area of the sector is going to be theta over 360 
times pi r squared. It's a very similar principle to the length of the arc. We want just that fraction of the area. So we take the angle 165 over 360 times pi times 8 squared. Okay, 8 squared is uh, the r here is not the same as the r of the sphere. So r, this is the radius of the sector. So we're going to take 165 over 360 times, whoops, 360 multiplied by 8 squared and multiplied by pi. That gives us 88 pi over 3. Now, it's much better to leave it in terms of pi. If your calculator gives it as a decimal, just leave the pi out of the calculation and put 88 over 3 and then put pi with in write pi next to it. Now, you'll see why it's important to do that because the area of the sphere, the surface area of the sphere is, as they tell us, 4 pi r squared. Now, this r is not the same as this r here. This r here is the radius of the sphere, not the radius of the sector. So This is 4 pi r squared. So it says the surface area of the sphere is the same as the area of the sector, so these two are the same. So we can say that 4 pi r squared is equal to 88 over 3 pi, because these are equal to each other. The area of the sector and the area of the sphere are the same. So we can now see we have one unknown. If I divide both sides by 4 pi, I have r squared equals 88 pi over 3 times 4 pi. So those cancel out. So you have 88 over 12. Okay, so you have r squared equals 88 over 12. So you had that divided by 4 pi. And it gives us 88 over 12 which is 22 over 3, and you find the square root so r is equal to 22, r squared is equal to 22 over 3. So therefore, r is equal to the square root of 22 over 3. Of course, we're only interested in the positive square root of that, which gives us 2.71 centimeters. So before we rounded it, before we rounded it, it was root 66 over 3. Okay, so the r is equal to root 66 over 3 and that gives us 2.71 rounded to 3 sf so 2 r equals 2.708 0 1 goes on so r to 3 sf is 2.71 centimeters it doesn't mention how to round it in the question therefore we do what we have been instructed in the beginning of the paper, non-exact answers should be given to three significant figures. Okay, so that's 2.1 centimeters. That's the radius of the sphere. Okay, now on to part C. Now, part C has told us, um, this wasn't actually part of the question. This is from the previous question. I'll bring that up when we need it. So it says, a cone is made from the sector by joining OA to OB. So basically, that's why I brought this over, because we need to look at the sector from the previous page. So this cone is being made from this sector. This sector was transformed into this cone by joining the line OA and OB together. Okay, it's like three-dimensional. All right, so it's like this is a flat piece of uh, paper. You picked it up, and you've joined A and B, OA and AB, OA and OB together, and it formed this cone. All right, calculate the radius of the cone. All right, so we've got to think about what, what we have here. OA and OB... OA and OB are basically the length of this arc here. Okay, so that means, um, so, sorry, the length of this, there's not this arc, the length of this slanted height, this is a slanted height of the cone. So OA and OB both are basically the 8 centimeters. OA is 8 centimeters, that's O to A. Okay, and we can say that the circumference of the cone is the arc AB to the LAB is equal to the circumference of the cone, the circumference of the base of the cone. Okay, so we can say that the length of the arc AB is equal to 2 pi r. Is equal to 2 pi r. The circumference, this, this, this r here. Okay, so we can say the length of AB is equal to 2 pi r. Let me write that a bit neater. Okay, well, which is equal to 2 times pi times r. All right, so we need to find what that r is. 
Okay, we need to find what that R is. So the radius of the cone is equal to the length of the arc AB. And we learnt, or we worked out, that the length of the arc AB was 165 over 360 times 2 times pi times 8. That's the length of the arc. And that's equal to 2 times pi times r, where this r is the radius of this cone. Okay, so the circumference of this cone is equal to the length of the arc because you join these together, A and B join together, forming the base of the cone. So here, what, what we can see is we can divide both sides by 2 pi and they disappear. So you're just left with r equals 165 over 360 times 8. So you have 165 over 360, 165 over 360, um, keeps doubling the numbers, multiplied by 8. Okay, and that gives us 11 over 3, okay, which rounds, it rounds to 3.67, 3.66 con continuously, goes on, so it's 3.67, 3.67 centimeters, three significant figures, Okay, we could write three and two thirds if you want, and that would be okay, I guess. Okay, in exact form, that's fine. Okay, so that's the radius of the cone. Okay, next we're told to calculate the volume of the cone. Now, the volume of the cone, they give us the formula is equal to a third times pi r squared h. Now, we know that OA is 8. We also know that the radius of the cone is 11 over 3. I'll write it in its exact form. 11 over 3. To find the volume of the cone, we need that radius, which we have, but we also need the vertical height of the cone. Now, this is not the vertical height. This is the slanted height. But this forms, as you can see, a right-angle triangle. If you think about taking a slice through the cone, there's a right-angle triangle formed between h, which is the vertical height of the cone, the radius, and the slanted height. So we need to find what h is. Now, we can see h is a shorter side of this um, right angle triangle so it's going to be equal to the square root of the square of the hypotenuse minus the square of the other shorter side which is that radius so that should give us the height of the cone okay so we've got to find the square root of eight squared minus i'll put this in brackets 11 over three close the bracket squared and that will be the height of the cone, which gives us the square root of 455 over 3. I'll re keep it in this exact form until the end. The square root of 455 and then over 3. Okay, I'm keeping things in exact form so I can round at the end. So we keep accuracy in our answers. That's always a good idea. So the radius, even I left it in its exact form, not in its rounded form. And this height, I'm keeping it in its exact form. And in the end, after I finally find the volume, I'm going to then um, round it to 3SF. Um, as it doesn't say anything else. So you've got a third times pi times r squared. So I'm going to use 11 over 3. I'm not going to use this rounded value. I'm going to use this exact value. That's why I wrote it down here, So I, in case I need to use it again. So that's 11 over 3 squared, a third pi r squared times the height, which is root 455 over 3. So if I now use this, so I'm going to have root 55 over 3, okay, um, multiplied by 11 over 3 squared which is 1 2 1 over 9 I guess I'll just put it in like this and then times pi and times 1 third okay that's a third pi r squared times the answer to the previous part which is root 4 5 5 over 3 that should give us our answer, which is 100.105, so the volume is 100.105, so we can say 100 centimeters cubed to 3SF. 3SF, that will be 100 centimeters cubed, and there's the answer for part 2 of question 9, part C. And that was, I think, the last part of the, yep, that's the last part of this question. Any other questions um, that you want to see from this paper can be found in the playlist that will be found in this section over here at the end of the video. You can click on that to get to the playlist for this paper. Questions on this topic of um, areas and volumes and surface areas and stuff, of course, mensuration is going to be found in this 
playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in this play in this position. Thank you for watching and see you soon.